Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, starting there in verse 10. And it reads like this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, say stand. Say it like you're doing it, say stand. Stand therefore, having grid your waist with the truth. Everybody say truth. Having put on the blessed plate of righteousness everybody say righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace everybody say peace above all take the shield of faith everybody say faith with which you have been able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation everybody say salvation with the sword of the spirit everybody say the sword which is the word of God. Everybody say the word. Say it with power. Say the word. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you once again for your presence. And Lord, I pray that this morning, God, that what you place within my heart, Father, would communicate very clearly to our church to this house God you've called us to war you've called us to be an army you've called us to fight this fight every single day Lord God Father we thank you for those that have fought for freedom but Father today we fight for our spiritual freedom and Holy Spirit I pray that you would move through this service we thank you now we pray in Jesus mighty name amen and amen before you're seated Would you turn to your neighbor and ask them, do you understand the battle? You may be seated. Do you understand the battle? Today, I want to take a few moments to talk to you about grow in your warfare. Grow in your warfare. But before we can grow in our warfare, we must first understand our battle. We must first understand our battle. And today, I came to give you a revelation. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Very clear and very simple. If, you're, if you are in the flesh, then you're not in the spirit. If you're in the flesh... You are not in the spirit. And if you are in the flesh today, then you will lose today's battle. You will lose today's battle. And as we read the scriptures here in Ephesians, Paul says that we must put on the full armor of God. But if you notice, he starts with something very interesting. He says, if you are going to defeat the enemy, he says to put on the belt of of truth. Everybody say the truth. Say it like you do it. Say the truth. (laughs) The belt of truth. See, the belt is a piece of armor that he uses, and he's illustrating a Roman soldier's outfit, and he uses it because the belt secures all the pieces of the armor. In other words, if your belt was not secure, then all the other pieces of armor would not be secure. And in battle, they would fall off. Everything would fall off. Then they were vulnerable to the enemy. So you first had to put on the belt, which he was describing, the belt of truth. And see, the belt of truth is so important. It speaks of our character, of our integrity. It speaks of the fact that we are not living a lie, but we are living the truth. See, the righteousness of God won't work for us if we are a hypocrite and not living the truth. See, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, 
and the helmet of salvation won't guard us from our accuser and the attacks if we have a guilty conscience. When you put on the belt of truth, the truth of God's word, everybody say God's word. When we put on the truth of God's word, the truth that you are living the life that has been changed by the blood of Jesus, that has been changed by the power of God, then you are grounded in truth. See, there should be something about us that shuns the wrong and we do the right. Understand this, when you get a hold of the truth about who you are in God's word, that's spiritual warfare. See, because we fight this battle, this fight every single day, and when you fight this fight, you got to understand who you are in God. And see, when you are in this spiritual battle and you have the truth of God's word, that puts power behind your sword. It puts power behind your shield. It puts power behind what you stand for and what you believe for. So what does it say? The first thing is the belt of truth, which is the word. See, we must get up every morning and put on the truth. See, the problem with many Christians that many Christians have is that they are believing the wrong things about what people say. They're believing the wrong thing about them. Listen to what the word says about you. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? Romans 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to his mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. See, when you know the truth of who you are in Christ, you begin to walk different. See, when you know what the Word says about you, and you know what your Heavenly Father says and talks about you, all of a sudden you begin to walk different. See, you don't walk like the way you used to walk back in the day. You don't walk like the way you used to walk in the world. You don't walk like the way your parole officer says things about you, or maybe even people at your workplace say about you. When you understand what God says about you, and you understand what God says about His children, you begin to walk a little different. See, we will be people that are blessed and prosper when we're people of the word. See, when you, when you want to grow or if you want to grow in warfare, then we need to understand what God says about us. Here's the problem. We know what everybody else says about us except for what God says about us. You know why people listen to haters? Because they stop listening to heaven. People are too busy listening to haters because they've stopped listening to heaven. You stop listening to what your heavenly father says about you. You stop listening to how he says that he will bless you and that how you are more than a conqueror and that how you are no longer bound by sin or bondages. We listen to everything else except the heavenly word of God. Every single day you've got to get up and put on the belt of truth. Put on what God says about you and stop believing the lie. Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't, don't believe the hype. You got to stop believing the lie. You got to put on the truth about what God says about you. But look at what the next thing that we brought, that he brought out there, that Paul brought out, was the breast, breast, breastplate of righteousness. And what is that? The breastplate of righteousness protects our heart. It protects your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep guard your heart in all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Guarding your heart. See, the vital organs were guarded by the blessed breastplate. And you've got to guard your heart every single day. Don't let anybody get your heart. Don't let anything get your heart. You've got to guard who you are. You've got to guard your beliefs. You've got to guard what the Word of God says about you. You've got to guard your heart because Satan will come in and remind you every day that you failed. He will remind you that you are unworthy. But you got to remember, we don't put on our righteousness. We put on his righteousness. Every single day when you get up, you put on the truth and you put on that righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. In him. Put on the righteousness every day. Don't go around 
with performance-based religion. Put on his righteousness. See, there are many people that go around performing. They perform because they don't put on his righteousness. They don't protect or guard their heart. So the enemy tries to get in, tries to get to our heart. And, and, and we've got to understand that when we let the enemy get in, then we can't stand. See, it's not about who I am, but it's about who we put on. And when we put the righteousness of God, it begins to protect the things from us and from those things that try to get into our lives and to our hearts. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you one thing, man. The enemy tries to come in every single day and tries to corrupt this heart, get in and tries to tell me things and tries to lie to me. But when I put on the righteousness of God, I put on the breastplate of righteousness and I know who I am in God, then I'll tell you one thing. Man, I walk different. I talk different. I believe different. I think different. The righteousness of God, the breastplate of righteousness. The third thing is that we see is that talks about shod your feet. In other words, protect your feet. Protect your walk. You got to protect your walk. Ephesians 5, uh, 6, 15, as we read, it says, Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, we have to have our feet shod with the gospel of peace. We have to protect our feet. Look at Isaiah 52, verse 7. It says this, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet who come, who brings good news. Say good news. Who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings and good things, who proclaims, self uh, proclaims salvation. See, Christians that don't shod their feet are never in peace. They always bring bad news. You ever run across those people that every time you see them, all they got is bad news? Don't look at your neighbor. All they bring is bad news. They never have good news. Don't be a spiritual schlep rock. Many of you don't even know who schlep rock is. Young people don't know who schlep rock is. Wowsy, wowsy, me, me. You know, whoa, whoa. Because you never have peace, you're always focusing on the negative. You're always focusing on the negative because there is not a peace in your life. Because you don't shod your feet. You don't protect your walk. See, great generals understand that there are two things that are vital if the army is going to move and take ground. Two things that are very vital. Number one is food and the second thing is feet. See, if the food is not there and the feet are not covered, then the army is not going to advance very far. you got to understand something. In this walk with God, you've got to have a firm footing. You've got to have a firm footing in your walk. See, the Roman soldiers would have what we would call today on the bottom of their shoes. They would have cleats on the bottom of their shoes. So when the opportunity presented itself, they would move and have a firm footing underneath them. See, the footing would say that if you're in a fight, if you're going to win or you're not. See, when you have a firm footing, any boxer or any fighter would tell you, you've got to be planted. You've got to be planted, but you've also got to be light. And you've got to be able to have a firm footing. So you got to understand something. You cannot win if you're always negative. And when you're always negative, it's because you don't have a firm footing within your life. See, we have to have the shoes of peace, the gospel of peace. We got to put on the peace of God every single day. I don't know about you, but there's been some days in my life, man, where I've gotten up grumpy. Come on, somebody. Some of you, that happened to you this morning. I've determined in my heart today, I'm not going to get up grumpy. I'm not going to get up frustrated. I'm not going to get up stressed out. Do you understand the God that I serve? I know things may not look the way that we may want them to look. I know that things may not be in order the way they need to be in order. I know your bank account may not look the way you would like it to look. I know that maybe your children may just kind of be on the edge right now. But I've determined in my heart that I am going to walk in peace. That I'm going to live in peace. That I'm going to be able to lift my hands. Why? Because I am free in Jesus 
Galatians 5.1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I'll tell you, I'm tired of being entangled. I, I, I'm tired of being entangled by things that just try to hold me down and keep me tied down. I came to let you know that we are, yes, free, but we're also free in Jesus. We have the liberty to lift our hands. We have the liberty to praise and worship and give God praise. As I look throughout this crowd here this morning, man, I'll tell you, it don't look like a whole lot of you are in bondage today. You look good. You're smelling good. You look healthy. Come on, somebody. You've got no reason to complain. We live in the finest city in the world. We've got something to shout about. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've got your family back. You've got your mind back. You ain't in chains. You ain't in prison. You're free. Stand fast in the liberty. Don't give up your liberty. Don't go back into things. You have no reason to go back into things. Stand fast in the liberty that God has given you. And don't be spiritual tumbleweeds where things are just tossing you back and forth. You don't have to be. God is in control of your life. You know what you need to do is you need to, 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 to get in your church, get in our church here, get in your family, get in your marriage, and you just stand fast. Enjoy the liberty that God has called us to have. There was a Greek warrior named Achilles, and he was a powerful, powerful warrior. But the one thing that messed him up was that his feet were exposed, and the enemy wounded him in his heel. And even though he was a brilliant fighter and warrior and no one could take him down, one enemy seen that his walk and his feet were exposed. And he lost the battle because he was wounded in his heel. And that's where you get the saying, Achilles heel. See, the enemy wants to get us off balance. The enemy wants to mess up our peace. See, the enemy would love for us to lose the peace of God. See, without the peace of God, we're defeated. See, if you walk around today all messed up, stressed out and frustrated, you've got no peace within your life. How many of us know everything else just begins to unravel? Everything else just begins to snowball. But when you've got the peace of God, it doesn't matter what comes your way. It doesn't matter what circumstance rises up within your life. When you've got the peace of God, you're able to go through that situation, that trial, that circumstance. See, Christians that are off balance are stumbling Christians because they don't follow the manual. They don't follow the manual. And they find themselves stumbling. You know what we need to do sometimes? We, sometimes we just need to remind ourselves and tell ourselves, relax. Look to your neighbor and say, relax. 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 Get up every morning and put on the whole armor of God and know that God is with you. That the enemy would love to come in and take your peace of God out of your life and get you frustrated and get you stressed out. Because understand this, if you're stressed out and you're frustrated, you're depending upon your own strength and you're not depending upon God's strength. If you're frustrated and you're always messed up, it's because you're depending on, 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 on your own ability and your own strength. But when you depend upon God's strength and God's ability, you walk different, you think different, you believe different. Your faith is at a whole different level. Quit worrying. Stop being stressed out. Sometimes we get all stressed out on stuff we've got no business being stressed out on. God has gifted us with his presence, his anointing, his favor, his touch upon our lives. God has gifted us. We have the power and the presence of God within our lives. Put on the shoes of peace and walk in peace. This is, understand this, when you, when you don't walk in peace, man, that's spiritual warfare. That's spiritual combat. And here's the thing is that you always are worrying. Do you know when you're always worrying, it'll get you sick? It'll get you sick to your stomach. Man, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll mess everything up about you. It'll mess up your attitude. It'll mess up your family. It'll mess up your children because you're always worrying and you're sick and you can't do the will of God. Understand this. That's the attack of the enemy. 
And you got to understand that's spiritual warfare. And if you can learn to put on the peace of God every single day, you start walking different throughout your day. You start walking with victory throughout your day. And I tell you, when you walk with victory throughout your day, it becomes contagious. People around you start living in victory. People around you start talking in victory. People around you start giving God praise regardless of what they go through. The peace of God. Look what Isaiah 41 10 says. It says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be anxiously looking, looking about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you, and surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with us. God is with us. And when you shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of the peace, then you walk totally different. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in peace. How many of you ready to walk in peace? How many of you ready to walk in peace? The next thing that he brings out is the shield of faith. See, the Roman shoulder, uh, uh, soldier's shields were covered with animal skins of leather, and it covered the brass shield. And before battle, they would soak it in water. So that when they went out into battle, they would take the shield. And when they were under attack with an aerial assault, with fiery arrows, they would take those shields and form a unity defense. They would pick them up and they would hold them together. And they would make a unity defense. And they would lift up their shields and it would protect them from the fiery arrows of the enemy. And the reason they would, they would cover it with leather and soak it in water so that when those hot arrows would hit it, immediately it would, when it would hit the shield, it would instantly extinguish the fiery arrows. Imagine if those arrows would have hit the soldier. It would hit them and burn them from the inside out. That speaks of the power of of the shield of faith. See, because you got to understand that, this, that Satan takes a bow and arrow approach at your life. Understand, because he's like a roaring lion. He takes a bow and arrow approach. See, when you understand who you are in God, he can't get close to you. But he takes a bow and arrow approach. And what does he do? He begins to shoot off thoughts. He began to shoot off thoughts from a distance and accuse you day and night and condemn you day and night and put shame on you day and night and put temptation on you day and night. Arrows of fiery thoughts and he hopes that they will take fire from the inside out. But if you got the shield of faith and has been soaked in the washing of the word and you hold it up then no weapon formed against you shall prosper. See, when your shield has been washed by the word, then those fiery darts that begin to condemn you about your past or begin to lie about you or begin to say things about you, you begin to go back to the word and you begin to read what it says about you and you begin to shake off those things. You begin to put up your shield and they begin to extinguish those thoughts that are coming after you. See, your shield extinguishes the fiery thoughts of the enemy. It puts off the lies that he tries to tell you that says you are not worthy and that you that and 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 all the shame that he tried to puts on you has the enemy has the enemy ever done that to you tries to put shame on your life tries to put things on you and say you're not worthy say you can't do it you're not capable why are you doing it uh, you you can't be like them or you can't do it like them Every single day, man, the enemy tries to attack our lives and tell us that we can't do it and we can't make it. But you've got to understand what the word of God says about you, that you are more than a conqueror. And if God is for you, then who can be against you? And when you lift up that shield, then all of a sudden those things begin to bounce off your life. The fourth thing that we see is that he said, put on the helmet of salvation. The battle of your mind. Come on, somebody. You have to protect your mind, your thought life. Romans 8, 6 says, For 
to be carnal minded is death. Understand a headshot is a kill shot. And the helmet of salvation protects us from the torment of the enemy. And see, a lot of times the blow to a headshot sometimes can be so bad that we can't even sometimes make it back. Because it's a kill shot. See, a headshot is a kill shot. And sometimes the enemy, if he can get into our mind and he can get into us and begin to corrupt the way we think and the way we believe, then all of a sudden sometimes, sometimes people, it can be so hard or very difficult to, for them to make it back to the house of God because the devil has been able to get a hold of their mind. But when you put on the helmet of salvation, it begins to protect your mind. It begins to protect your thoughts. See, if we get up every day and we think about carnal things, every day of our lives, we don't have our mind spiritually renewed, then the enemy is defeating us all day long. See, it's just a matter of time. If you start thinking about things and start listening to things and start looking at things, all of a sudden it's just a matter of time before all of a sudden it gets into here the way you think and then it gets into here and all of a sudden you start acting out on upon it. See, carnal mind is death. You can't just go around all morning to noon looking at Facebook and Instagram, looking at this and that. And all of a sudden, you're carnal-minded, and all that does is bring death to your praise, death to your joy, death to your faith, death to your hope, death to your dream because of the carnal things that are going in your life. If you ever wonder why sometimes people can't walk and live the way the Bible says, maybe it's because things have gotten into their minds. It brings death. Luke 12, 20, 29 says, nor have an anxious mind, or other translations may say, neither be of a doubtful mind. Don't have a doubtful mind. See, the enemy comes to kill and steal, to steal your mind, your peace, and your confidence. Understand, man, if the devil could come in and get your confidence, get your joy, get your peace, man, then he can get a hold of your heart. And once he gets a hold of your heart, then he begins to get a hold of your actions. And I, I came to let you know that this year in 2016, we are going to grow in our warfare. We're going to grow in our spiritual life. We're going to grow in every area of our life. Why? Because God has called us to be an army. God has called us to be a church of leaders. God has called us to be a ministry that will stand in the midst of darkness. John 10.10 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Give the Lord a good hand of praise for God's word this morning. See, some of you don't have peace, joy, confidence, because the enemy is a thief and he's robbing you of your mind. Oh, oh believe me, man, I go through things. There are things that happen. But man, I've declared and I've determined in my heart, I'm going to get up every morning. And I'm going to have the peace of God. God didn't call me to walk around with my head down. God didn't call me to walk around frustrated. God didn't call me to walk around all messed up. He called me to live a life of victory. He saved me so that I don't have to be in chains anymore. He rescued me and delivered me and took away the drugs from my life so that I can have the joy and the confidence and the happiness of God within my life. Whether we do, we put on the whole armor of God. And we hold up the shield of faith and we keep our helmet on. Tell your neighbor, keep your helmet on. And the fifth thing is Matthew makes his way to the keyboard and gets ready for me. Was the sword of the spirit. Sword of the spirit. Is your blade sharp? Is your blade sharp? See, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. There was a man, one of David's mighty men, named Eleazar. And he got into such a battle with the Philistines, and he fought and killed hundreds and hundreds of Philistines. And the Bible says that his hand stuck to the sword. 
and that he would not let it go. They, it says that they had to pry his fingers off the sword. That the, and, and understand this, the sword is the word of God. Wait for me, Matt, just a little bit. The sword is the word of God. And this sword, what happened was in his life, is that it became an extension of his natural life. That the two were so intertwined that it, with his natural hand, that his sword, that when he was fighting the enemy, it became an extension of his body. And the two were not even able to be pried apart from him and his sword. What would happen? If we would be a church, a generation that was so connected to the sword of the spirit that it was just an natural extension of our bodies. That whenever trials, temptations came and even blessing came, we went to the word. And we understood what the word said about it. Because understand, if you got a hold of this word and it could not be pried from your hand, beloved, you would be having more victories within your life. You would be killing enemy after enemy after enemy. But the problem with America today and Christians today is that this word, this sword is not a part of their natural life. See... When we go to the word, just like Jesus has said, it is written. It is written. When we get that in our spirit, there is something that rises up within us that don't let the enemy push us around anymore or back us up to a corner. But we pull out the sword and it's a natural part of our lives. It's a natural part of our lives. And this word, we go to the scriptures when we're in trouble. When we got problems and all of a sudden when we see that things are coming our way, we go to the word. And I'll tell you this, man, the word has got answers for every single question that you got within your life. You want to learn how to raise your children? Go to the word. You want to learn how to work on your marriage? Go to the word. You want to learn how to be blessed? Go to the word. You want to learn how to build ministry? Go to the word. You want to learn how to disciple? Go to the word. You want to learn how to be a leader? Go to the word. You want to know how to be a productive person in the community? Go to the word. You want to know how to build something powerful? Go to the word. The word and us need to be inseparable. See, Satan taxes us on a daily basis. Therefore, we need to check our armor daily. Go ahead and play, Matt. And we got to make sure that it's polished, it's oiled, and it's ready for active duty at all times. Don't allow your sword to get rusty. Don't allow it to get rusty. You know how it gets rusty? It's when we don't use it. Or maybe I should say this. You know how it gets dusty? It's because you don't use it. I would wonder how many dusty Bibles we got. That wasn't in my notes. I'll just let you marinate on that for a minute. I wonder how many dusty Bibles we got. I wasn't saying a church. I was thinking about America. But if that settled in your heart, praise the Lord. I wonder. See, if it's dusty, because when you open it, it shakes the dust off. And when your hand's on it, there's no dust on it. If anything, your Bible should be oily. When the oil's from your hand. It should be marked up. It should have notes in it. Highlighted promises that God has given you. Scriptures that you've gotten the hold of build your leadership scriptures that you've gotten the hold of that you've been able to receive blessing from your life 
And many times, we don't know what the word says about our lives. And because of that, it's very hard for us to put on the armor of God. See, if we're going to grow in warfare, we got to know how to put on the armor. And when you know how to put on the armor, you understand what the armor represents. You walk different. You really do. You walk different. See, if we're losing the battle, maybe it's because you have become a performance-based Christian. See, if you're losing the battle in the spirit, Maybe it's because you've become a performance-based Christian. What is that? You know how to say hallelujah. You know how to put the tie on. And you know how to say amen right when it needs to say amen. You know when to come into the sanctuary right when the pastors come in. Hello. You know how to do all those things performance based see but when you have the armor of God on you don't have to be performance based you're spiritual based you're not performance and to grow in warfare we've got to be able to have on the armor of God and this morning maybe you're here today see because you got to understand something you say well does that happen to all of us can I just be honest with you? It happens to every single one of us. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how many mission fields you've gone on. It doesn't matter how many titles you have. Or if you've done every ministry in the church. If you don't got your armor on, you don't got the armor of God with on in your life, then you... Every single one of us could be attacked by the enemy. It don't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what kind of title you have. We are all are able to be attacked by the enemy. But when you've got the armor of God on, up on your life every single day, it's not once a week, it's not every other day, it's not once a year, but every single day, you've got to put on the armor of God. You've got to begin to go to the scriptures and put this armor on because when you got this armor on, then you're ready for battle. You're ready for spiritual battle. See, I know you know how to fight. I know you know how to put your hands up. I know you how to do it in the physical, but do you know how to do it in the spiritual? You've got to know how to do it in the spirit. Because when you learn how to do it in the spirit, then you're going to find yourself lasting. You're going to find yourself at attention in the spirit. You're not just going to be performance based. You're not just going to be somebody that's going to do it just because you got to do it. I couldn't wait to get to the house of God this morning. I couldn't wait to come and give God praise. I couldn't wait to get here to lift up the name of Jesus and lift up my hands and praise God for my salvation and thank God for what he's done in my life and thank God for what he's doing today and thank God for what he's going to do within the future. I couldn't wait to get to the house of God. Stand with me this morning. See, when we grow, growing in our warfare is understanding the battle we are in. When you understand the battle you're in, then you know how to grow. A lot of times, a lot of times, we can make the mistake of getting all the strategies down. Oh, believe me, I've done that. Get all the strategies down. All the strategies. But something I'm learning stronger than ever before. The most powerful strategy there ever is. Is the one that's in his word. Putting on the full armor of God. Putting on the full armor of God. When you put on the full armor of God, you know what the word says about you. You know how to fight in the spirit. You're not performance based. You're, 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 you're walking in the things of God. 
and Christians that lose the battle are Christians that have taken off their armor. Understand that. People, Christians that are losing the battle are Christians that have taken off their armor. Do you believe what the Word of God says? Do you? Victor Irish, do you believe what the Word of God says? Do you believe what the Word of God says? This Word says that we can make it. This Word says that we can do all things. This Word says that you can be that father, that husband, that individual that will do something powerful for the kingdom. It says that it can, it can happen. And many of you have experienced that. And many of you continue to experience that. But if you ever stop experiencing it, and if you ever stop believing, it's because you've gotten away from the truth of what God says about you. Spiritual warfare. Growing in our warfare is understanding the battle. Understanding the battle. And if you're like me, human being there have been times that my breastplate has slipped to the side things have gotten into my heart there have been times that I got so sweaty in doing the ministry took off my helmet things began to get in so many times that the shield of faith got heavy Some things begin to burn me from the inside. Oh, there's some things that have happened. But one thing I've learned, and I've listened to my leaders, says, if you ever experience that, get back. Get back. Get back. It happens to all of us. God's called us to be an army. How many of you are ready to be that army that God's called us to be? How many of you are ready to be that army? If you want to celebrate your freedom and be that army that God has called you to be, would you meet me at this altar this morning and let's pray together. Come on, let's pray that God will show us those areas, maybe of our armor, maybe that it fell off.